we are going to be building a two-factor authentication system on Python. We're going to be using the Python OTP library or the PyOTP, which is the one-time password library. It comes up with a couple of variations. It generates one-time passwords randomly every few seconds. This library is amazing. It comes up with its own passwords and it changes those passwords every 30 seconds or so. Let's start by opening up Google Colab and you can do this on any IDE. Just for the sake of ease, I'm using Colab. And you want to first install PyOTP. Pip install PyOTP. It'll take care of installing all the libraries that we need. In my case, it's already installed. Now come back here and now you want to import PyOTP. So we say import PyOTP. Now the way it works is you need to provide a key or a security key or a phrase and PyOTP will use that phrase and using the words in that phrase, it'll generate a random password for you. So we'll say key is equal to, let's give it a key or you know a phrase. It should be a long phrase so that there are enough words or characters that it can use in order to generate a six digit password. So let's come back here and say, this secret MISPA key app or some, some random, I mean, it doesn't have to be something specific. You're giving it so that the library can identify where it's coming from. Now let's create an object. There are two types of passwords that this library can generate. One of them is the time-based OTPs and the other is counter-based OTPs. Now, time-based is something where the password itself or the Python library will you know, remember or it will take care of generating all these passwords every 30 seconds, whereas the counter-based OTPs will not change. You are giving a couple of counters. So let's say at number one, the first counter, this is the library, this is the password. The second time you use it, this is the password. Third time, fourth time, fifth time. So you can define as many counters as you want and those passwords will remain stagnant or static all the time. So you can use it, reuse it as many times as you want. Whereas the time-based OTPs will go away every 30 seconds. Now come back here and we'll do key TOTP is equal to, and that's an object variable. We'll call PyOTP dot. Now it has the TOTP function, which is a time OTP. Here you just need to provide the key. Once you're done with this, it'll start generating. So let's start playing, but I will also print what's the variable right now. All right. So now this is this is just going to print the the password or the password that's generated right at this moment. Let's print, and it says incorrect padding. So something is missing here. Zero one three four six. So it needs a little longer key. So this secret MISPA key app is here for you. Let, let's see if that works. So, okay, it, it generated a password for us, 043521. Now, let's have another code and now see if this works. So for the way you can verify it is, it has a verify function. We call it as totp.verify. And here you can specify whatever code you want. So let's say I'm gonna write down 043521. And if it's not 30 seconds past yet, it should still work. But it did not. It says false. So let's see what's the new code right now. So instead of this, if I just replace this with this new code, it should give us true. And you'll see after a few seconds, it'll again change. Things still the same. All right, now it's changed. So now if I give this one, and I, or I, if I still try running with the old code, it would not run because now the password has changed. So it's in real time changing or detecting the variables or whatever library it has created. And then based on that, you can generate those codes. So that's amazing. Now, uh, this is with TOTP, right? Let's try to do the same thing with the counter based function. So we'll do the same thing here. So here it says, instead of TOTP, let's call a function or let's call an object called HOTP. And here HOTP at zero is certain thing or 
one is certain thing, 1401 is certain thing, and it'll never change whatever value you want to give. So let's copy the same thing and see if it works. Come here and we'll copy paste the same code from there. And let's try running this and it says false. So here we want to just print and see what's the password at this moment. Let's see HOTP at zero. What does it give you? It's 260182, which is good. And in this case, if we verify, if we give the value 26, oops, 26, 0182 for zero and let's run this we'll print we'll print this as well yeah, we can try this as also print for this variable and based on 1401 the value is 316439 and we'll give it 1401. Let's run this. And it's giving us true, true all the time. And this will never change because this is based on the counter based. And here you give out any, any, any other counter. So let's say 1403, for example. It should not work. So you can see the false and for the true. For that particular counter, it is, of course, true. And this, I mean, based on what kind of application you're running, those types of passwords could be used. But the most exciting use that I found for this one is using the Google Authenticator. And you have, you know, other authenticators as well, but Google Authenticator seems to be working fine. And I've tested it just now. Let's come back here, open up another code. For this library, we'll be using a QR code. And in order to, you know, capture all the codes, the, the one-time password that it generates and we'll use a QR code library to run this. Now the Python OTP library can create a, a URL that we can pass to Google Authenticator. PyOTP.TOTP TOTP and here you provide the key that we have originally created so the same key. Come back here and now you're going to be providing some of the username and username of the applicant or the user who's going to log in and at the same time the issuer like the app or the website that issued this code provisioning uri and we'll call the name of the user misba at youtube okay so that's that's the user's name and the issuer name let's say it's youtube that, that that's as simple uh, that should generate a URL for us. And let's see if we can print this URL as well. So we can see how it looks. All right. So we have this auth pile or, or this path for us generated. And you just copy this. And now we want to convert this into a QR code so that we can pass it to our Google Authenticator. Come back here. Now, for this purpose, we're going to be using a QR code library. So we say pip install QR code, import QR code, and well, this can simply just make the QR code for us. QR code dot make URL. And let's pass this. It'll first install the QR code library. And it has now generated this QR code that we can use from your Google Authenticator. So I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to press on scan QR code. And I'm going to scan this QR code from here. It's generated this YouTube function for me. So now if I try to enter this, let's see how it works. I'm going to write another code to take in the values that the QR code is doing and giving us and see if it can verify for us. So uh, let's say uh, we're going to copy the same function that we had in the past. Okay. TOTP dot verify. And in my case, I'm getting 854, 854, Let's see if it works. It's true. 
and in few seconds it'll change all right it has changed now so now the new code is so if i let me just try run this again it's false right so if i give you if, if i give the new code that the authenticator has given me now perfect so now it's true so you can use this you know boolean function in any of your you know web application or flask application using python of course and then use the two-factor authentication i found this interesting hope you did too with that take care stay safe bye bye